Hi, Nick Bizai here with another of our series of videos for practical or applied math series uh, for water treatment plant operators. If you've been looking at our basic math videos, uh, uh, which are more theoretical, and find yourself asking, uh, those are fine, but how do I use those in my water treatment plant on a practical daily basis? Then these videos are for you. As again, we want to thank our friends at Lake County Department of Utilities. While I share this screen, we're going to um, continue to use their water treatment plant, the Aquarius water treatment plants, to um, explain to you some of these problems. Now let's go ahead and start with this. So again, this is practical math for water treatment plant operators, <clears throat> our third in a series of license exam training modules. As all of the modules start off, we, we do share these two tables with you so that you can look up data that you might need, some of the, uh, some of the math that you will need to do some of these problems. So I put these up here so you can refer to them. And by way of explanation, this table works this way. For example, if I wanted to change kilograms to pounds, I find <clears throat> kilograms in the first column there. And I see that I need to multiply by 2.2 to get to pounds. And likewise, if I want to go backwards, if I want to do pounds to kilograms, I would multiply by 0.45359. <clears throat> this table here gives you some formulas and some constants, some, some things about the Aquarius water plant. So you may need to refer to some of these to do some of the math also. So uh, we're going to continue. We finished off on our last video with going through the raw water station and the permanganate feed system and the force main that brings the water up to the plant and we stopped there. So today we're going to pick up at that point. We're at the rapid mixers now where the water has come in and we're beginning to treat it. So the first question asks us, at the plant we have two rapid mixers and each of them is seven feet square and 14 feet deep. At a plant capacity of 20 MGD, what is the rapid mix detention time if both units are in service? So again, this is a simple math problem uh, for uh, detention time, which we know always equals volume divided by the flow rate. We're gonna use that column or that formula. And if you want to work this problem, now is a good time to stop the video, put it on pause, then work the problem and then pick it back up to see if you wanna compare against my answer. So when I work this problem, I put the, the volume on top, of course, always goes in the numerator in our detention time formula. I simply multiplied seven by seven by 14 to get cubic feet. And I multiplied it by two units because both of them are in service. Now I want to divide that by the flow rate. And as I mentioned before, if you're, if you're in cubic feet units on top, the bottom has to be in some kind of cubic foot uh, nomenclature. It can't stay in gallons. So I took the 20 MGD, and I went up into one of those uh, tables that you saw at the beginning of the presentation and see that for every one MGD, I have 1.55 cubic feet per second. Well, I don't have one MGD, I got 20 MGD. So I'm gonna take the 20, multiply it times the 1.55, and that will give me the number of cubic feet per second this plant is, is capable of operating at. If I divide that into the total volume of the two rapid mixers, I come up with about 44 seconds. Now that makes sense. We try to design rapid mixers on conventional water treatment plants to be less than a minute, typically 45 minutes, 45 seconds, 30 seconds. And sure enough, this plant was designed with two of them to give you the almost 45 seconds with both of them in service at the max flow rate of 20 MGD. Let's move on to the next one. Water leaves the uh, two rapid mixers and goes over to uh, as many as six flocculators in parallel. This problem tells us that, that the flocculators are 16 feet wide by 55 feet long and have a 16 foot water depth. Again, at the maximum flow rate of 20 MGD, sorry for the misspelling there, what is the overall flocculator detention time in minutes? Again, we're gonna use the detention time problem here. And if you wanna work this problem, now's the time to stop or pause the video. There we go. So I set up the detention time problem as 16 feet by 55 feet by 16 feet times the fact that there are six units. Now in this one, since they're asking me for minutes, I've decided to change the cubic feet in the numerator to gallons per cubic foot, or 7.48 gallons per cubic foot, so I multiply by 7.48. I'm gonna take the bottom and change that into uh, something that works for gallons per day into gallons per minutes. And to do that, I can divide the 20 <clears throat> MGD after I read it, wrote it out that way. <clears throat> Excuse me for my voice today, very weak. Divided by the 14 or 40 minutes, and that whole problem will give me about 45 minutes total detention time. So that. That makes sense also, just like the rapid mix was at 45 seconds. The flocculating time is about 45 minutes at 20 MGD with all of my units in service. 
Now the plant rarely operates at 20 MGD. Normally it's at a, at a much lower rate. So if you know anything about flocculation, and if you don't, go see the video that we just put in on our advanced series, which is about G values and mixing times. We want to be sure that when our, our flocculators in a conventional water treatment plant, less than an hour, preferably around 30 to 45 minutes. So at Aquarius, when they're operating at something less than 20 MGD, which they, they typically are at 8 or 9 or 10 MGD, they've got to make a decision to turn on and turn off given amount of flocculators that match the flow rate so that they're not in there for more than 45 minutes. In other words, if they kept all six flocculators on and were treating 8, 8 MGD, they'd, they'd be in their flocculation period for more than an hour, and that's not good. If they stay in flocculation too long, we're going to beat up the flock particles, we're going to damage them, and I've got to settle well. We've got to be careful about that. But the operators have to make this decision. So I put another problem in that helps us work on that. Now this problem here says that operators at Aquarius need to keep flocculator detention time in a range of 25 to 45 minutes for optimal benefit in the summer. Any of the six flocculator units can be put into or taken out of service to fit their needs. They've got slide gates that are easily managed by hitting a button, the thing opens up or closes. You can, you can isolate a flocculator to, to work on it, or you can put it in a service very quickly. So the question is, if the flow rate through the plant on any given day is 7.45 MGD, how many flocculators should be in service? And yes, I know it would be a simple matter of taking 20 and divided by six and see that each one is worth a little over 3 million. So if I'm at 7.4 million, I would need a couple of two or three flocculators on it. That's easy, but let's do the math so we at least understand how the principle works. Let's set it up this way. Volume of each flocculator, I figured out to be 16 by 55 by 16 or 4,080 cubic feet. I set up the problem this way. I put the detention time of 45 minutes. That's the max time I'd rather be there. I don't want to be there anything more than that. I'm going to solve for the 45 minute range, even though they said 25 to 45. The max number that I would have on would have to give me at least 45. You have to give me the 45 minutes. I'm going to set that equal to the number of units, which is X. I'm going to have to solve for that, times 14,080 cubic feet per unit, divided by 7.45 flow rate multiplied by the 155, which will give me cubic feet per second. So if I multiply by six, I'll get cubic feet per, per, per minute. So when I solve for X or number of units, I get 45 times 7.45 times 1.55 times 60 divided by the total volume of one unit, and it comes up with 2.2 .2 units. Now this gives us an opportunity to discuss flocculation time. It's a very important and critical step. When they come up with 2.2 .2 minutes, the operators have to make a decision. I probably don't want to put on three because I'm going to get on there too long. Two might not be enough, but since I solved that for 45 minutes, putting on two units and not three, I think would still get us in a 40 minute range or 36 minute range or something like that. So we're still in pretty good shape. So here the operators of Aquarius need to make a decision every time they change flow rate. They got to determine, is it worth putting on another flock editor? or should I leave things the way they are? So these are the kind of things we got to look at. So probably a good time to uh, study flocculation a little bit more closely. You can do that by operating your working on this question about operations. This question number four is a bit involved, so I've got some slides I'm going to show you as we go through, so be patient. It says that the flocculators at Aquarius have four compartments to them and one central shaft that rotates and drives the paddles in, in the compartments. Paddle arrangement is that there are four in the first uh, compartment, three in the second compartment, three in the third compartment, and then finally two in the last compartment. So since you have one shaft, rotating and driving these paddles, obviously there'd be twice as much, roughly twice as much energy going in the first compartment than it would be in the last compartment. The distance of the middle of the shaft to the outside edge of one paddle is six feet. So they're giving you a radius of a circle. They're saying when the paddle goes around one time, it cuts out a circle that's roughly 12 feet in diameter or six feet radius. And the question is then, at a tip speed of one foot per second, how long will it take for one paddle in the last to make one rotation? Let's look at that. Let's, let's look at some pictures so we know we understand what we're talking about. On the left of this slide, you see the side view of the last compartment. You see a shaft coming down through the middle on the left of it, two sets of paddles, three blades each. Where the green arrow goes, you see the outside edge of that paddle rotates once when it goes around one time. It's supposed to cut out a circle that would a distance of pi times d or 2 pi r. If you look on the right hand side, you see what I'm saying. If that shaft in the middle is coming towards you, then that red circle that goes around is the cutout part of that paddle 
outside of the diameter of that paddle going around one time. We've got to measure that distance to see how far it must travel. Here's the way it looks like from the side. There's your motor driving the shaft. And those shafts drive four paddles in the, in the first compartment, three sets in, in the second, three sets in the third, and finally two in the last. And look at that, that blue dot there, that thing I have coming on the shaft in the beginning of the, uh, the I want to show you the flow path. Because I want to show you a little bit about compartmentalization of flocculators. If I were to run this flocculator without baffle walls, that blue chunk of water that I've got there, that drop of water, would tend to flow right down through the middle of the flocculator and out the other side. Some of it, though, would hang around the side walls of the flocculator and drag and not go as fast. When I do a detention time calculation for a flocculator and I come up with 30 minutes, say, or 45 minutes, that's an average detention time. Without compartmentalization, some of the water would get through that flocculator much faster than the 30 minute average. Some of it would be much slower than the 30 minute average. Take it all together, there'd be an average of 30 minutes. I might think I'm being okay, but the point is some of that water will escape too quickly and not get flocculated properly. Some of it will hang on too long and uh, be beat to death, I guess, is one way you want to look at it. Just, just form itself and make good flock and then finally get broken apart because it's in there too long to get broken up. So the distance that a, uh, that a drop of water would travel at the fastest if that, uh, that flocculator had no compartments would be right down through the middle and out the other end. So that distance would be, would be less than optimal. But by putting these baffle walls, and we'll see this drop of water start to move, we'll see the path that it has to take. It starts off, it has to come into the flocculator, go down under the first baffle, up around over the second baffle like that, down through the third set of baffles, or baffle and paddles, and back up the fourth, finally out to the uh, sedimentation basin. So we'll see that the S-shaped path, the elongated S-shaped path that that paddle had, or that drop of water had to take is much longer. If, if it were stretched out, it'd be much longer than going straight down through the middle. Because that has to travel a longer path, it stays in the flocculator at a closer time to the optimum of 30 minutes or 45 minutes, whatever I calculated, than it would if it, had to, if it were allowed to go straight through. But by baffling and putting compartments in these flocculators, I get a chance to keep more of the water following a serpentine path, more of a plug flow, and I'm in there longer than I, than I, um, than I require. Uh, while that water is following that S-shaped path, of course, the paddles are going around this way and forming, giving you the energy input that you need to form the flock particles. So we get this barrel roll type of motion, water going up and down this way and being turned this way. And that's an ideal situation for flocculation. So with four compartments and all these sets of paddles, we have a lot of control over this kind of situation, which is very good. So we go back to question number four and they ask us if we have these four compartments, one central shaft, and the distance from the middle of the shaft to the outside edge is if one paddle is a, a radius of six feet. So we know that the diameter is 12 feet. The question is this, at a tip speed of one foot per second, how long will it take for one paddle in the last compartment to make one rotation? And that one foot per second is important. Operators know that that last compartment is very important to, to uh, flock formation. That paddle has to go around fast enough to keep flock particles in suspension so they don't prematurely settle, but they keeps them enough suspension so that they don't get beat up also. So that one foot per second travel time is good for most, most situations. Now that's an average. Um, typically um, operators will play around with that one. Sometimes it'll be down to 0.9 or 0.8 feet per second. Sometimes they'll be up to 1.2, 1.3 feet per second. For example, if you have a heavy uh, turbidity day coming in, a lot of heavy flock being made, you might want to go 1.2 or 1.3 feet per second to keep those heavy particles up in suspension. Otherwise, they're going to settle out prematurely in your basin, in your flock basin. If you have a light day and um, uh, maybe the water is a certain temperature, you'll find over practice that you have to run these a little bit slower. So that's the old idea of not setting it and forgetting it. You need to play with these things and make sure you know how to work these things. And every operator needs to know how to do this on ship. When they do their calculation, when they determine tip speed, they'll go to the end of that compartment, sit there with a flashlight if necessary, or you know, some kind of lighting system. And they'll watch when that paddle comes up this way, right up to the 90 degree mark or the, the zero degree mark, let's put it that way. And they'll start their stopwatch. And they're gonna watch that go around one time. 
I'm all the way back to that original setting again and then stop the stopwatch. So if this has to go one foot per second, how long is it going to take for that paddle to go around one rotation? Because that's what they're interested in. The math would be the outside edge of the paddle rotating on the shaft will cut out a circle that is a perimeter of pi d or 3.14 times the radius times two or 37.68 feet for one rotation. That's the perimeter of the circle that the paddle cuts out. Therefore, if I'm going at a rate of one foot per second, that operator knows it should take 37.68 seconds to make that, make that travel distance, that path. So when they do this, they look at that and they, they're looking for 37.68 seconds to come out when that paddle comes by. If it comes by after that, then they know the paddle is moving too slow or they may want to make adjustments. If it comes up much sooner than that, then they know the paddle's traveling too fast, they may want to slow it down a little bit. So that's, that's how you operate these flocculators. So again, let me just uh, emphasize the final tip speed of uh, or the tip speed of the final flock paddle. The rotational speed of paddles in the last flock here generally meant to average one foot per second or so. And the idea is they had just enough energy to drive the flock particles together and to keep them suspended, but not to break them apart, as I mentioned. If you run that paddle in the last compartment, the rest of the flocculator compartments will take care of themselves. You don't have to mess around with them. You don't have to do any calculations. Stick to that last compartment, get that one foot per second and adjust it a little bit faster, a little bit slower if you need to, and you should be okay. Every operator on shift should know how to do that. Okay, that's today's topic. I hope that uh, got you where you needed to be. And once again, thanks to Lake County Department of Utilities for letting us use the data from the aquaria plant, Aquarius plant part of the Practical Math for Operator series. Um, you can look at some of the operator, other operator videos by clicking on the lower right button that's coming up. That will help you find these other channels. If you wanna uh, just uh, log on to this, uh, these, these three or four channels that we've got going, you can press the uh, button on the end there when that pops up and you can, you can you'll get email notifications that these are coming. Hope this has been helpful to you, thanks. Check back frequently and uh, we'll be putting more of these on as time goes by. Thank you very much.